For a long time I struggled with keeping my house as clean as I wanted it to feel and no matter what I did or what routines I implemented, it was just not clean enough. But over the years I've practiced a lot and I've found the perfect tips and tricks to keep my house super clean all the time but with minimal effort. And that I think is a key point. How can we keep our house as clean as possible, spending as little time cleaning as possible? I've done one of these cleaning videos before and you can check it out in the corner, but I live a very, very minimalist lifestyle so cleaning naturally is very easy. So therefore today I'm in a regular household with I would say a normal amount of possessions to show you how to keep a a clean house despite not having to be a minimalist. Today I am sharing our weekly cleaning routine and I'll also share tips on what we do daily and monthly so we can maintain the cleanliness and not have to clean too much on the weekends. I've also made a cleaning schedule that you can download if you're interested and I'll leave the link in the description below. We wash bedding and towels once a week and we wash clothes about one to two times a week. While that is washing I also make sure to start any hand washing. Unfortunately, all my dresses require hand wash, and if I don't do them one by one, they easily pile up and the stains can really set the dresses and ruin them. So these days I just do them once a week to make sure they don't pile up. When I do hand washing, I always use very cold water to avoid setting any stains, I add a little bit of detergent, and then I let it soak for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I rinse the clothes in cold water again, then I drain the sink and hang the clothes out to dry. If my dresses has any stains on them or if they have a lighter color, I will always hang them to dry and bleach in the sun. But if the dress has a darker color, I will let it drip dry in the shade to avoid bleaching the color. We actually air dry all of our clothes because there are just so many benefits to doing it. And my favorite part about drying clothes and linen outside is that drying any white linens in the sun will make sure that they stay white without you having to use any bleach. Now I don't have a pet, but this week I've been taking care of this beagle called Missy. And if you do have a pet, I highly suggest adding them and their belongings to your cleaning schedule. Cleaning your pets and their items will make your home feel, smell, and look so much cleaner, and the pets like it too. Yeah, I like that nice. Normally I use a Swedish dishcloth to clean the bathroom, but a sponge like this works just as well. For cleaning the bathroom, I put white vinegar in a spray bottle, and then I use baking soda or baking powder for all the grease and dirt. We have a few cleaning rules that we use in our family to avoid the bathroom getting too dirty, but first let's do a deep clean. White distilled vinegar is by far the best cleaning solution. It kills bacteria, it cleans on most surfaces, and it's super effective, especially combined with baking soda or baking powder to clean. To keep our bathroom mirror clean, we have implemented a simple rule in our household. Don't brush your teeth or floss too close to the mirror because this will splash on the mirror making it harder to clean. Now cleaning our mirror is simply a matter of dusting, instead of trying to get rid of hardened tooth paints and stain. It's a great rule because it's super simple, adults can follow it, and you can slowly teach your children to follow it too. I will also wipe down the sink and all the items on it. For stubborn grease, soap residue, and dirt on things like caps and soap stands, I put a little bit of baking soda on a damp cloth to wipe the dirt off. This removes the grease instantly, it's non-toxic, and it's so affordable and easy to use. If you haven't tried cleaning your bathroom with baking soda before, please try it and let me know how it goes, because I promise it will make your life easier. Once the items are clean, I also like to sprinkle baking soda on and around the sink to remove any dirt that is harder to remove. The baking soda acts as a very mild abrasive so you don't have to do the work, and it's also mild enough to not scratch ceramics, glass, or plastic. One of my favorite tips is to keep a Swedish dishcloth on a hook underneath inside your bathroom cabinet. This means you have easy access and a good place to dry the cloth, and you can wipe down your sink once a day. To clean the toilet, you actually don't need any chemicals. This is a much easier way to clean the toilet, and all you need is baking soda or baking powder. Sprinkle about a quarter of a cup to half a cup of baking soda into the toilet bowl and pour in a quarter of a cup of white vinegar and then let that sit for about 10 minutes to loosen any dirt. After about 10 minutes, use a toilet brush and your toilet will be as good as new. We clean our toilet like this once a week, but this depends on another rule we have implemented. The second rule in our bathroom is that everyone who uses the toilet must use the toilet brush if there are any stains in the toilet. I use the exact same method for the shower but without the vinegar. I simply sprinkle baking soda on the floor and on a damp cloth for the walls, and then I scrub the floor until buildup residue from soap and shampoo have disappeared. Then I just rinse it down and it's super clean, and this I only do once a week. 
Next up is the kitchen, which is another highly trafficked area in our home. So for the kitchen, once a week I will wipe down all surfaces and appliances on the counter using my vinegar homemade spray. Once again, baking soda and vinegar is the best method to remove any stubborn stains, especially around the stovetop area. As you can see here, there is a lot of stuff on the counter. This makes cleaning harder. So another minimalist cleaning tip is to keep things off the counter, as long as it is practical. The fewer steps we have for our belongings, the easier it is to keep our homes clean and clutter-free. I think that we often keep things in the kitchen that we don't need or use. So try to keep only what you use on a daily basis out on the counter. I think we've been sold this idea that we need a lot of things to actually use our kitchens, but in reality you don't need very much. We cook all of our meals from scratch and it's easier to use our kitchen when it's clutter free and clean rather than when it's full of appliances and things that we don't know what to do with. Clean the sink using the same method as the shower with just dry baking soda and a brush or a cloth to scrub down the sink. It will make stainless steel and ceramics look shiny new again without the need for any harsh chemicals which we especially don't want in the kitchen contaminating the space where we eat. Usually once a week I will also wipe down the front of any cabinets. Here you can see that they hadn't been cleaned for a while so I used baking soda, again on a damp cloth, to remove the old stains. Much less elbow grease is needed if you use baking soda. So I do try to wipe the drawer and cabinet fronts once a week to avoid stains building up and staining. To make this even easier, we have another rule if you spill something in the kitchen. The rule is to use a dishcloth and vinegar spray and wipe it off straight away. This means that I never have to use baking soda in my home and cleaning them is basically just dusting and removing the odd spill. Next is the living room, which for us is usually quite easy to clean. I start by airing out, then once a week we wipe down all surfaces and appliances, and I do this again using my vinegar spray. For the cushion covers and blankets, I clean them every few months. And once you start cleaning like this, you'll soon get a feel for when things need to be washed and cleaned again. And another tip is remembering that you can always air things out. Hanging blankets in the sun will remove bacteria and keep them clean and fresh for longer. Once the house is clean, I like to clean the dishcloths as well. My favorite way to do so is by boiling them for a few minutes and letting them air dry completely in the sun. This will kill bacteria and remove any smell and it will make your dishcloths last a lot longer. Lastly, I vacuum the hallway. We vacuum once a day or every other day at least. Because we had a dog in this household, we vacuum daily, which is also why we don't have a dog. But for anyone who has pets, I did create a second cleaning schedule specifically for you so that you can keep your pets clean and your house clean. So that is the entire house clean, and then I'll just leave the windows open all day just to air it out, unless it's winter and then I'll just leave them open for as long as I can stand it really. I really hope you like these tips. I also have a weekly, monthly, and yearly cleaning plan if you're interested, a cleaning schedule that you can download for free just in the link below. And if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.